Hi, my name is Blaine Moores. I'm an associate professor of biochemistry at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center in uh, Oklahoma City. I'm going to talk about the use of Emacs to edit live notebook, uh, Jupyter notebook cells, as well as um, uh, text areas on web pages. So like a lot of technical workers, I find myself having to write prose in uh, text areas on web pages, as well as um, uh, working with code in uh, Jupyter Notebooks and Colab Notebooks. Uh, and uh, um, often I have uh, wished for the full power of Emacs while doing so. Well, now that is possible. Uh, actually, there are several solutions that have been available for some time. I'm going to talk about one solution that uh, I'm familiar with and has worked out for me. So this requires the use of two software packages, uh, Ghost Text and Atomic Chrome. Um, Ghost Text is an extension for the web browser, whereas Atomic Chrome is a uh, package for Emacs. You have to have both of these. Um, so Chrome is for the editor side and uh, Ghost Text handles the browser side. The Ghost Text uh, extension is available in uh, the uh, Chrome web store and uh, Ghost Text is represented by this icon. Uh, which has a ghost in front of the capital letter T. It is being developed by Federico Brigante. He is a uh, very prolific um, JavaScript uh, uh, developer. He has a web page committed to ghost text as well as a GitHub site. So here's an example of uh, ghost text. Um, so this is a, a snapshot from um, a session of, that I had while editing uh, LaTeX on the um, Overleaf uh, website. So Overleaf is this uh, service, web service that uh, empowers the editing of LaTeX documents on the web. So I have clicked on this ghost text icon in the toolbar, had already had opened up Emacs and I had the Atomic Chrome server running. So a connection was established as indicated by this uh, uh, blue border around this text area. And as soon as that appeared, the text appeared in a uh, buffer inside of Emacs. So I have overlaid the area where normally the uh, compiled PDF would appear in a uh, overly session. So I'm using a configuration for LaTeX that I uh, developed, which is available through the Moore's Lab uh, GitHub site. I also gave a talk about how I use LaTeX uh, in Emacs. Um, at the Berlin Emacs meetup in August. This talk was not recorded, but the slides are available on this website. So I would like to now uh, switch to a little live coding um, to make this a little more interesting. So I start my day uh, at uh, this other website called 750 Words. Uh, this site just takes plain text but um, I like to write in uh, LaTeX. So uh, I, Ghost Text came to my rescue when I started using this every day last May. So I, I clicked on that uh, Ghost Text icon and highlighted that area in blue. And uh, there's a, some boilerplate that I like to uh, start my day with. Um, I like to uh, um, get a list of my uh, deadlines that are coming up. Uh, as uh, shown here for the next several months. And then I um, have landed at this uh, tab uh, stop. And uh, so I, I had issued a, a tab trigger which uh, inserted this uh, almost 50 lines of uh, text uh, from a snippet in, through YAS snippets. And then, you know, I'll change uh, uh, this to uh, um, with this text to whatever, and uh, and then I can hit tab to move to the next site. I was uh, dead tired last night, so I fell asleep on my desk. And, um, you know, whatever. So I just keep on going, and then hit tab again and, and uh, enter my uh, to-be-done items. And then, you know, what I love about... Uh, Emacs is that you can hit uh, Control C, Control J to uh, insert a new item. Uh, 
and so forth. So you can extend the list. Uh, initially, I just have uh, 10 items. I'm going to have uh, more. And, and on I go, um, using the full power of uh, LaTeX. So uh, I have configured um, Atomic Chrome, so it will recognize this website as a... Uh, it will open up this web, uh, the connection to this website with this uh, buffer in the uh, LaTeX um, um, major mode. To uh, turn this off, we would um, we can close simply just uh, close the buffer, and that will shut things down. On the browser side, you can right click on the icon and disconnect disconnect ghost text on this page. Okay, let's go to a different site, different situation. This is not a feature that's advertised by the developer, but I discovered that you can edit code cells um, or any kind of cell for that matter in a Jupyter notebook. However, we have a challenge here. We have three text areas open, uh, three code cells. Uh, so if we click on the um, ghost text icon, these three areas will show up in green and we'll be prompted to select the one that we want to activate. We want to activate the one with text. So then we can go in here and, uh, uh, you know, make um, uh, edits, of course, and uh, you can do this in Emacs, or we can do it in the browser, it doesn't matter. Uh, you saw me editing in Emacs, but we can also make the edits in the uh, text area of the browser, and they will show up uh, immediately in uh, Emacs. So we could change the, the case of that M, and that's going to show up over here. Okay, um, we can run this code. So this is uh, R. So, you know, one of the three major programming languages for data science, at least the Jupyter is supposed to be a combination of uh, Julia, uh, Python, and R. So we've, we're running uh, MCMC to get the posterior distribution. And we're going to plot that those out with this PyPlots uh, package. And we have these beautiful plots showing the median of the posterior distribution for four variables uh, in four parameters in the car's uh, data set, uh, set which is uh, available or uh, built into the R package. Uh, and then these shaded areas are the 80% uh, interval. Okay. Um, Oops. So now for the Python side, here's an example in which uh, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, actually insert a, a snippet. Uh, Click that uh, uh, cell, and then I'm going to enter NV uh, LIG for uh, uh, NGL view uh, ligand, and uh, just hit enter. Oops. Oops. Hit tab, excuse me. Um, and we don't need this line of code, um, so we'll delete that and get. We want to load up this uh, PDB file. It's in this uh, uh, subdirectory. So the PDB file is a plain text file that contains atomic coordinates of uh, protein crystal structure. This protein happens to be important in cancer, and we have uh, doc. We screened uh, by uh, docking uh, 55,000 compounds on a supercomputer, and then we did MD simulations of the top 10 uh, leads. Uh, 12 of them uh, had the compound remain bound during the period of the simulation. Uh, so those uh, have some potential for uh, and require experimental validation. Uh, so we'll run this chunk of code, and this will give a view of the molecule that we can interact with in, um, by using the mouse. To, but I want to share this with my colleague. My colleague does not, um, is not set up to use uh, Jupyter but instead we can write this out to a HTML file, which I have loaded up already. And um, so we can actually, uh, um, we click on these uh, 
two arrows pointing at each other, we can get a uh, full screen view of this molecule and he can uh, find the, identify each atom in this uh, structure once about over a thousand atoms present are just hovering over a specific atom. So shown in gray is uh, the ligand that is uh, bound. Okay, so um, we still have this uh, box selected and uh, we still have these uh, two different um, so for each of the our selected text areas we have a separate um, we have a separate uh, buffer open Okay, to, uh, to wrap things up here, here's an example of using a, uh, with an evolving Julia code. And uh, so here, this uh, Julia code in this cell is in a uh, Emacs buffer. So you've got the idea now, I think. So in terms of plain text areas like in uh, Overleaf and then um, these uh, uh, cells in Jupyter Notebooks, these are other areas that can be edited like uh, in the uh, text areas within uh, Outlook, um, Webmail, and uh, Gmail. Um, instead of having to point with the mouse or click with the mouse, one can also use uh, key bindings or keyboard shortcuts. So here are um, the ones with three major operating systems. So how does ghost text work? Well, the main thing is you have to open up Emacs and get this Atomic Chrome uh, server running. And then um, with it up and going, ghost text will be able to, has to be activated, and it will uh, find the ghost text server um, through uh, the local ho host uh, port uh, 4001. If you uh, put that into the web browser, you, um, if you navigate to that port, you'll get output that looks like this. If everything's working well, otherwise you'll get um, an error message, and it should have a port socket a uh, web socket port number, uh, it will not be the same every time. So these are the supported web browsers in, in addition to Chrome, these are supported. And uh, likewise, anything in these, uh, that any browser related to these will, uh, can probably uh, use these extensions. For example, the Brave browser will use the Chrome extension and the Firefox browser uh, extension works with uh, Waterfox. These are the supported editors. Um, each editor has its own extension and uh, this uh, uh, ghost text was initially developed for uh, Sublime Text. So you ha if you have Sublime Text then you can use its a smooth operation as con positive control when things go wrong uh, with Emacs. This is Atomic. Uh, this is a GitHub site for Atomic Chrome. Atomic Chrome is available for installation uh, through Melpa. This is my configuration for EMA, uh, for uh, Atomic Chrome. Um, so I have it set up so the server starts whenever I log in, and uh, I have it set up so that default major mode is uh, Python to deal with the Jupyter notebooks and Colab notebooks, and then I have. Um, uh, the major modes for these other websites are defined below. This is a testing site, so the, the developer has uh, made to help with uh, troubleshooting. He also has a protocol on his website to follow in, uh, during troubleshooting. So here are some precautions. Uh, you'll find that ghost text doesn't work with Pluto. Pluto is a new computational notebook that's uh, for working with uh, Julia. Uh, my suggestion would be just to run my Julia uh, in Jupyter. Um, it doesn't uh, also doesn't work, of course, with R Studio. Even though R Studio sort of resembles a web page, uh, web browser, um, it, it's not. Um, of course, you can always run R as you've just seen using the IPy uh, kernel. Um, I will also caution you that if you use the Emacs server, you may run into issues with the server uh, competing with the port 4001. So instead, you should probably 
I configure the Emacs server to use a specific port. And I've so far, although I haven't done that myself, um, so far I haven't found any conflicts with the org Rome uh, user interface. So uh, my conclusions are um, Ghost Text uh, allows you to uh, edit prose in your uh, uh, with your favorite major mode uh, in uh, uh, the text areas of web pages and in uh, the cells of Jupyter Notebooks. This allows you to uh, tap into snippets and thereby save time, as you have uh, probably have hopefully uh, got the idea of. I'd like to thank my friends and mentors who've helped me uh, out during my second year in my uh, EBAX learning spiral. And, uh, these include uh, uh, um, my local colleagues. Uh, we meet once a month in the Oklahoma Data Science Workshop. Last July, I gave a presentation about Ghost Text. And then also my uh, friends at the uh, Berlin and Austin uh, EMAX uh, meetups. And uh, in the UK, uh, Research Software Engineer uh, uh, MX Research Slack channel. So I don't attend these every month, but I, I try to make the meetings as often as I can. And then I'm supported by the following uh, grants, uh, which uh, allow me to spend at least uh, some time each day in Emacs. I'll be happy to take any uh, questions.